episode of Chewing the Brew. I'm Matthew, and today I'm going to be drinking and talking about the Balebreaker Pilsner. That's, well, the Pilsner by Balebreaker Brewing. Um, I've talked about a couple other Balebreaker brews here before, including Dorman C and a couple of their big bottle beers, which are quite delicious. Uh, Pilsner, to me, is kind of the one of the quintessential beers. It's one of the dominant beer styles, uh, historic uh, Pilsner Urkel, I guess the, the Czech, Czech brewery Urkel, I guess, is the one who invented this. It's one of the earlier filtered beers, so it's always been known for a, a, a moderately bitter, uh, very dry cracker, um, uh, hop character, malt character, very balanced, um, very simple beer. And so when you're talking about a, a Pilsner made by any given brewery, you're probably talking about a beer that, as we would say, they don't have much to hide behind. So there's no super crazy flavors in here that you can hide some less, <laughs> less good flavors behind. It's going to be a, a very clear and pure beer that it's easy to get wrong. But it also means when you have a good Pilsner, you can take that as a sign that that brewery knows its stuff. Um, I, this is not my first drink of the Pilsner by Bale Breaker, um, but I do and have found I enjoy this quite a bit. So we're just going to dive right in here. Hmm. Very light uh, straw to almost honey color, possibly. Uh, decent head. Um, yes, I am not using a Pilsner glass. Um, I have a couple high flutes, but I don't have like a kind of a straight side with the coming in Pilsner glass um, at the moment. So I'm just going to use my regular, uh, you know, tasting glass, which I picked up for like 50 cents at Goodwill. <laughs> it even has a local brewery on it. So woohoo. Um, so head is, is pretty nice. It's a... Uh, Decently thick. It's not going away too quickly, but it is definitely fading. Um, so once again, kind of straw yellow color. Um, the nose. Ooh, okay, so uh, white bread, uh, cracker. The real dry malts. <clears throat> so this is a real lightly toasted malt uh, that makes up the Pilsner. Some uh, apple possibly, maybe? All of a sudden, uh, my allergy started kicking in just a few minutes before I started recording this. Yay! So my sniffers aren't what they usually are. Uh, but biscuit cracker, um, uh, some grass, uh, really nice. There is definitely a sweetness that you smell to this. Not a sweet sweetness, but it's there. It's it's you you can smell it. It's not hidden away or not there at all. It smells of good things. Yeah, let's see how this tastes. <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, okay, so once again, cracker. It's almost like a saltine start and a saltine finish on this thing with some things, some some other complimentary notes coming in across the middle. Uh, there is definitely a, a hot bitterness, and I'm still tasting that down the back of my throat now, so that's a pretty decent linger. It's a very crisp flavor. There is not a whole lot going on, uh, and what's there is pretty nicely defined and works together really well. It has a juiciness that's quite pleasant. I would say it's probably medium bodied. It doesn't taste super thin. Um, what else is in there? I'm still picking up that sweetness, but uh, it's not like apple. It's more like, okay, so this is gonna be weird because not many of you will have a point of reference to compare this with. Um, I would say it's a very clean, not table sugar sweetness, but almost. Maybe halfway between table sugar and honey. 
And what I'm personally going to point that back to is milkweed. Yes, I've uh, milkweed is uh, produces a um, a syrup out of the flowers that uh, is very thinly sweet and quite tasty. Uh, I mean, it's sweet. It's uh, way back when, one of my earliest jobs, I think from the ages, summer job from the age of like 14 to 16, I worked for a butterfly farm. We raised monarch butterflies in uh, the Sacramento Valley in California. And and raising butterflies, we have to raise our own milkweed in order to have enough of it because that's what the caterpillars eat. That's what the monarch caterpillars eat. And so we had greenhouses full of milkweed. And the milkweed would, you know, start small and it would grow up to it was till it was like shoulder height for me, so like five foot tall plants. And it has these really pretty orange yellow uh, flower uh, clusters. And as I would walk through in the morning, this this milkweed is, you know, shoulder height, and I'm pushing through the the rows to to clip the milkweed for for the feedings that day. And I would end up just sticky, covered with this really sweet syrup and little little drops on like every flower, uh, flower petal or flower not petal flower um, cluster. And that's the sweetness that I'm tasting. <laughs> I know, very few people I'd imagine can consider that a point of reference. So I'm just gonna say for everyone else's benefit, it's halfway between table sugar and honey. It's a very clean, um, uh, plain sweetness. Uh, not, uh, you know, it's not full of other notes like a like a, a dark honey or a or a um, brown sugar or a maple syrup, but it's not completely just characterless like a table sugar. So that's what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> that's tasty stuff. I think of Pilsner as kind of the ultimate. Not necessarily a hot day beer. It, it has enough character to stand up year round, um, but like a the working man's beer. There's a reason why a lot of the real classic beers through history, a lot of the not not all of them, but enough of them, a substantial enough number of them have been pilsners. Um, they are they're they're clean, they're basic in a good way. Um, they demonstrate a mastery of craft, but because they're not spectacular in a, you know, crazy chocolate bomb or crazy spice bomb or crazy sour bomb or crazy, you know, sweet bomb, because they're, they're just right down the middle. They're, they're clean, they're basic, they're simple. You know, simple is probably a better word than basic. Um, you don't have to put a lot of thought into enjoying your Pilsner. A good Pilsner will stand up to being thoughtfully enjoyed. But you don't have to be thoughtful to enjoy a Pilsner. It's a great basic beer that fits into any party, fits into any space. If you're not sure what beer to pair with your given meal, try a Pilsner. Odds are it'll probably work. At the very least, it won't be offensive in how it mixes with anything. Um, and so, you know, you, you finish mowing the lawn, you want a beer, odds are a Pilsner is going to quench your thirst at that time. Uh, you just finished your workout. You want a beer? Heck yeah, drink after your workouts. Um, you know, Pilsner is just, it's its one of those go-to styles. And so a, 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 an example of a Pilsner that that hits that, that has enough, that is simple enough in its execution that it can just be enjoyed just for itself, or that, but that still has enough depth that you can actually get into it and, and kind of ponder it and think about it, that's a good beer. So this has been The Pilsner by a Bale Breaker Brewing Company. I like this one. I'll catch y'all on the flip side.